Hi guys, welcome to this video series on texturing terrain using Substance Painter. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at one approach we can take to um, adding some texture maps to our terrain. Um, and for this we're going to use Adobe Substance Painter uh, for creating these textures. But it also gives us the opportunity to introduce some new and interesting concepts such as UDIM coordinates uh, to ensure that we've got enough detail in our large surface uh, terrain without too much pixelation and, and loss in quality. Um, it'll also give us the opportunity to look at some ways in which we can extract data from our high polygon or high density volume terrain and transfer that or bake that down onto our polygonal objects as well for render time. Um, so let's jump straight in uh, with, I'm going to skip over this because we've been over this in class. Let's just talk a little bit about UDIMs because this is what we're going to be setting up in this video. Okay, so UV coordinates, you're probably used to working with them. They, uh, when you peel apart your geometry and lay it flat, uh, within a coordinate system. Uh, usually the goal is to fit all your coordinates into the 0 to 1 range so they all neatly fit in and here you can see my uh, test terrain that we're going to be looking at has got UV coordinates that stretch the full way from 0 to 1 very neatly laid out and that's usually the goal of, of UV coordinates and then for this terrain say for example we could use a single 2k texture map to represent the diffuse texture, uh, the displacement, the normal map, the roughness map, the specularity. We can use a texture map of a fixed resolution and map it accurately onto our terrain. You know, you might want to, depending on your project, bump that up to 4K, 8K, even higher, depending on what you're trying to achieve. And usually, again, working in this way, if we stray outside of that zero to one range, our texture then will start to repeat uh, and that can be you know that can be something that you want to happen if you're using specifically tiling textures um, or if you're working in real time and you're trying to save space you know you might make use of that effect where the, the maps will tile or repeat for you however using UDIMS it's giving us access to additional space on that UV canvas. So as you can see here, our original UV coordinate system is up here in grey and it's still receiving a 2K texture map. So we're still getting lots and lots of detail. It's just that we are taking advantage of these extra UV coordinate cells to really increase. And as you can see, it's a factor of eight that it's um, it's been increased by so we've got you know 16 2k maps now so we're cramming in a lot more pixels um, onto our textures and getting more detail which is you know for working in large scale terrains it's often very useful so the coordinates the UDIM coordinates and we're going to take a look at how we can set them up in Houdini in a second so the UV coordinates are, uh, are represented by a tag a UDIM tag that is added onto the output file and then it's read back in by the supporting shader so you can see here I've got um, some test bakes that I did and you can see here it's appended the UDIM attribute onto the end and any shader that supports UDIMs will read this and it will know where to place the UV coordinates on this UDIM grid, okay? So here you can see how it roughly maps out. Uh, usually the stride, it's called, goes all the way up to 10. So you can have 10 rows and then as many columns as you should need. But as you can see, we're, we're already, even at this, we're generating a lot of maps and a lot of data. So it's a balancing act between um, finding what works for you and you know not uh, rendering out thousands of texture maps so there you can see the example there so we've got this one is actually tiled uh, two by two so we've got we're making use of 1001 1002 and then 1011 and 1012 so this is us um, using four different texture maps okay so it's tiling it's taking those 2k 
texture maps and creating them for these four tiles here. But you know, for, for the large terrain that you wanted to get a lot of detail out of, you could go to a four by four tile, which is what we're looking at here, and then really squeeze out a lot of detail across all those different texture maps. And then in our shader in Houdini, for example, we can make use of the uh, this percent udim d uh, syntax, which is reading in this value off the file as a, a decimal value, um, and that will procedurally read in and know where to place the UV coordinates when we read it back into our shader. Okay. So let's jump over to Houdini, and I'll just explain where I am in Houdini before I'm sort of ready to move on to that texturing phase. So I'm happy with my terrain. I've made a terrain. It's looking how I want it. I've, I've, you know, I've played around with the different noises, got it looking as per my reference, and I'm ready to move on to that texturing phase. And so we'll do a little bit of prep. And then in the next video, I think we'll, we'll make a start on, on the UDIM. So I've got my uh, terrain here. It is still a volume. Okay, so if we just click on the little I here to bring up the data for for this, you can see we've got a bunch of volumes here. So we've got six volumes. Okay, so it's not polygons at the moment, it's still volumes. And I've gone ahead and I've built some um, some different masks that we can use in our terrain pro in our texturing process as well, using the mask by feature node. So they live on their own separate volume. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I don't want this to continue processing because I'm, I'm happy with it. So I'm going to lock this node. Okay. And then I'm going to put down an output node. And I'm just going to call this HF for height field and then out. All right. So that's pretty much now set ready for texturing. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we can start creating those UDIM tiles and how we can start cutting up our height field into those specific UDIM chunks. Uh, and we'll do that in the next video. So thanks.